This isn't my own personal experience, but something that happened to a close friend of mine when she was living in Suginami in Tokyo. She lived in a building that was about 30 or 40 years old. The rent was cheap for Tokyo, so she didn't mind the age of the building. Let me just switch the narrative to first person at this stage as it will flow a bit more smoothly. I was living in Tokyo alone when this happened. I didn't really ever interact with my neighbors in my new place. I don't know if it was due to the age gap between us. I was 25 and they were at least double my age. I didn't mind not speaking to them much. I liked to keep to myself. I was polite though. I used to always nod or smile at whoever I passed in the communal hallway. But I realized about six weeks into my life in that building that I hadn't ever met my direct neighbors. I had no idea what they looked like. But that all changed one afternoon. I had just come home from grocery shopping and a man was passing down the hall towards me. This guy stopped and was fixed on me with a kind of annoyed look. And then he said... Do you want to stop scratching the walls at night? It's pretty hard to sleep with that noise. I literally could not understand what he was talking about. I replied to him with something along the lines of, I'm not doing anything like that. I sleep right through the night. My neighbor shook his head quickly and said, The next time you do that, I'll call the landlord. Then he went into his apartment and shut the door. I stood there baffled for moments with my bags of groceries, and then I headed into my place. Of course, I wasn't making any kind of scratching noise in the middle of the night. Why would anyone? I could already tell that I wouldn't be becoming best friends with that particular neighbor. The following night, I came home from work late. I was absolutely exhausted. I laid down on my bed, and before I knew it, I was asleep, fully clothed. I was in a deep sleep, but I was suddenly awoken by something. I heard a loud bang against the wall. I immediately thought about the interaction I had with my neighbor. Was he actually crazy? I hadn't been making a sound. I was incredibly irritated by being woken up. I did my best to ignore the bang and my neighbor, and I rolled on my side, trying to get back to sleep. After a few seconds... I heard this soft but present scratching sound. I guessed that he was right about something. There was a scratching sound, but it wasn't me who was making it. I guessed that it could have been a mouse or maybe even a rat. It seemed plausible for a building as old as mine. The place was practically made of wood. I figured that I would call the landlord in the morning to see if he could send in some pest control. I fell back asleep but woke up again. I sat bolt upright, because I recognized the noise that had woken me up. It was my alarm clock. It was still dark out, and I could see a bright pale moon as I hadn't bothered to close the curtains before I fell asleep. I grabbed my phone to shut off my alarm. For some reason, it had gone off at 2.50 a.m. I didn't set an alarm for that time. I sink back into my bed and close my eyes. And then, just before I drift off, I hear a loud bang. This time, it wasn't the neighbor. It was my bathroom door. It had just slammed itself shut. I decided to get up and investigate. I thought that I might have left the window open in there or something. I opened the door and I entered the bathroom. I saw that the window in there was closed. I stood there, puzzled trying to grasp for a logical reason why the door slammed itself shut. And then I heard something that chilled me to my very core. I heard a very faint but feminine voice say, Here you are. I froze. It felt like my heart was going to explode. I just heard a disembodied voice in my bathroom in the dead of the night. I was absolutely petrified. I didn't dare make a move. Then, from the other room, I heard another loud bang. A few seconds ago, I wanted nothing more than to leave my bathroom. But now, I wanted to hide there. I had to take action. I couldn't just stand there. While I was thinking of what I should do, I heard another frightening noise. The scratching was back, and this time, it was louder. It was horrible. 
It made every hair on my body stand on end, like nails on a chalkboard. I stumbled out of the bathroom and into my bedroom. I think I was just driven by some kind of adrenaline, even though I was scared beyond belief. I wanted to know what was happening. I pushed open my bedroom door, and there in the light of the moon was a shadow on the floor against the wall. The shadow looked like a bag of bones, as if it was the silhouette of someone incredibly malnourished. There was something in the apartment with me. I felt so terrified that I thought I was going to lose my mind. I watched as this shadowy bag of bones lifted one of its bony arms and its gnarled fingers to the wall. It began scratching. I couldn't take any more. I bolted. I ran out of my apartment. I didn't even bother locking the door. It seemed to me that no lock could stop that thing from coming and going as it pleased anyway. I didn't know what I had just witnessed, but I knew that I couldn't spend another night in that place again. So, she left and stayed with a good friend, and I'm that friend who shared her story here. I helped her find a new place, and she had her dad and her two brothers come to box up her stuff. She's doing much better now. I just had to share her story, though. I wonder what that bag of bones thing was. I have a theory, but... It's just a theory. Maybe a former resident who didn't have anyone to come and check on them somehow passed on there. Maybe that scratching was them trying to get attention. Creepy. This happened about six years ago. I'll never forget it. I woke up at about 3 a.m. needing to use the bathroom. I was a high school student back then and was living with my parents. In our house, we only had one bathroom, and it was downstairs. As I went downstairs, my eyes were drawn to the front door. I noticed that just by the position of the door handle, that the front door was unlocked. This actually happened quite a lot when I was in high school. I had the worst habit of leaving the door unlocked. When my parents came home from work, they would just stay home, but I liked to go out. I didn't ever stay out too late, though. I'd usually be home by 10 because one of my closest friends lived on the same street as us. We went over to each other's homes regularly. Anyway, I must have forgotten to lock the door when I came home that night. So, the first thing I did when I went downstairs was lock the door. I didn't want to be in trouble in the morning. Next, I went and used the bathroom, and just as I was heading back upstairs, I heard a terrifying sound. Our door handle began to rattle. Someone was trying the door. In a house that stood in absolute silence, the sound of someone violently trying the door handle was very jarring. It jumped me out of my skin. Not really knowing what to do, I turned to face the door. I guess I wondered at the time if there was someone from my family behind that door. A family member who had just stepped out and now that I'd locked the door, couldn't get back in. Maybe someone realized that we were out of something that we would really need in the morning time. Possibly they came and went to the convenience store. These thoughts all seemed plausible to me at the time. I thought that I should probably just unlock the door before whichever family member was out there got angry at me. I turned to head back to the door, but for some reason I hesitated on picking up the key from the bowl on the table by the door. Something just didn't feel right. It was around 3 a.m., and I was sure that no one would be out that late. I decided to go upstairs quickly and see if anyone wasn't home. I slowly creaked open my parents' bedroom door and took a peek inside. I expected to see one half of the bed vacant, but it wasn't. Both of my parents were sleeping soundly in their bed. So that left me with one unanswerable question. Who was trying our front door a few moments ago? I stood at the top of the stairs thinking about this for a few seconds, and then I began to creep downstairs, one step at a time. 
I think a part of me was thinking that there was some sort of emergency because this kind of thing just didn't really happen in my town. No one came to your house in the night, ever. I just thought that I should try to find out who was out there. I got to about halfway down the stairs, but then I froze. The door handle started rattling like crazy. The person who had a hold of the door handle on the other side of the door was forcing their weight down on it as they tried to open it. The door was making this horrible metal clunk as the handle was tried. It was shaking the whole frame of the door. I stood there, almost whimpering, frozen, trying not to attract attention for about 30 seconds, and all the while, that door handle rattled like crazy. After those 30 seconds were up, I heard a heavy thud against the bottom of the door. It seemed to me as if someone had tried one final attempt to kick the door in. After that final kick, the house fell back into silence, and whoever was out there, it seemed as if they had left. The following morning, our neighbors were all out in the street talking by the time I had left for school. A number of the cars in our neighborhood had flat tires. Someone had been out there last night slashing tires. I was so shaken by the whole series of events that it took me two years after it all happened to be comfortable with walking home alone again. I know it doesn't sound like all that much happened, but it was very traumatic for me, even now. I torture myself by trying to figure out what that person came to our house for that night and what might have happened if I didn't need to use the bathroom at 3 a.m. If I'd stayed asleep for a few minutes longer, then I think that whoever was trying the door might have gotten in. And if they were slashing tires, then I guess that means they came with a weapon. I often wonder about what the purpose of their visit might have been, why they picked our house that night. The not knowing is almost as scary as it was that night. I remember my parents saying that the police never made an arrest. It scares me that whoever did this is still out there. There's a comment on this message board that I want to share with you. The same kind of thing happened to my mother. She was staying up late at home preparing for a family event doing what a mom does, trying to be prepared for it. This old man from our neighborhood came on up to the door. He was really drunk, but my mom didn't know that at the time. She just thought that he had come to the door because there was some kind of emergency. She opened the door to him, and he just started rambling about the police and the local government and how much he hated them. My mom was involved in local politics at the time, so I think that's why he came to our home. My mom just let the guy ramble, tried her best not to provoke him. She wanted him gone as quick as possible. My mom can be really fiery sometimes and not afraid to tell people what she really thinks. But that night, she said that her gut feeling told her to just stay cool and composed. She said she even tried to joke around with the old man at her door, seeing that he was changing his mood she became a little more relieved. She had de-escalated him, and he was actually smiling. He turned to leave our porch, but before he did, he decided to share something with my mom. He said the following, I was thinking of coming over here tonight and using this. He then pulled out a huge kitchen knife from the back of his waistband. But you know what? You're all right. And with that, he left. My mother said that she began to hyperventilate as soon as she had closed and locked the door for the night. It was good thinking from my mother that saved her that night, and I think that kind of thinking may have saved the original poster in this story, too. Stay safe out there, everyone. Trust your gut in those early hours of the morning or late hours of the night. You just never know. It might save your life.